Uh, welcome to the afternoon session. Our uh, first speaker is Fahad from IIT Hyderabad. He will talk about structured 3D compositions and their application. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I will talk about structured 3D composition and application to parameterized algorithms. Okay. So what is structured 3D composition? In 3D composition, we look for structure for graph induced on each bag rather than just on the number of vertices in a bag and trying to exploit that to design good algorithms. Okay. That is the uh, idea. Okay. And here is the outline of the talk. I will just talk about first 3D composition, just recall it and how we do DP and some example of structured decomposition, uh, structured 3D composition. And then another uh, um, famous theorem which involved tree width is grid minor theorem. And that is also useful in designing algorithms in various uh, settings. And uh, uh, we will see like how structured decomposition can also play a role in these kind of theorems. And another kind of theorems are decomposition theorems that comes from the famous Backer's technique or shifting technique. Here also we can, you know, use the structured 3D composition to come up with uh, good decomposition theorems. And we'll see examples, okay? So we all know what is tree width. Like it measures how close a graph to a tree-like structure. For example, the, for the above graph, this is a tree decomposition. That means there is a tree and with each node, there is a bag associated with it, which is a subset of vertices. And each of this bag is a separator in the graph. And that is what algorithmically we exploit when we do, uh, when we do uh, a dynamic programming over uh, you know, tree decompositions. Okay? A more formal definition is like we, we have a tree and uh, with every node, some subset of vertices is associated with it. And union of bags will be equal to V of G. And for every edge, there is a bag which contains both the endpoints. And uh, the third property is for any vertex, we look at the nodes in the tree decomposition that should form a connected you know, subtree. For example, where all B contains, it's, it is connected. Where all E contains, this is connected. Okay? So this is a 3D composition, right? Now, the width of a 3D composition is like the maximum size of a bag minus one, and tree width is minimum over all 3D compositions, right? The width of it. And how we do a dynamic programming over a 3D composition, just recall it so that we can go in the, to the next slide, okay? So we just root the 3D composition at, you know, uh, some node, and each, each node in the tree decomposition is a separator, and that will partition the graph into two, which is one is bottom and another is top, or like something which is present and something which is future. And we look for, like, uh, try to partition all the partial solution which is fully here, based on how it interacts with the boundary. That is the typical way of doing dynamic programming, right? So for example, for vertex cover, for all a subset of this portion, what is the best vertex cover for G, the graph GT that its intersection with XT is S? Huh? Okay, and that, that information is good enough and that we can do in a bottom-up fashion in this 3D composition, computation. And the number of states we use in each, each node is two to the tree width, and the running time will be polynomial in that. And so we get something like two to the tree width into n algorithm. And for feedback vertex set, like you can think like max induced forest problem, where like, and then how a max induced forest interact with this boundary that will partition that uh, boundary into, you know, some, num uh, some number of parts, and you keep a good partial solution for that. And that will give tree width to the power tree width algorithm, but there are sophisticated techniques to get two to the power tree width algorithm using metroids, cut and count, and those kind of stuff. Okay. Now we will come to the structured tree decomposition. Like, suppose I have a tree decomposition where every bag is a click. 
Okay? This can help in designing algorithm. These kind of graphs are called a caudal graph. Okay? Another definition of a caudal graph is like, you know, it does not have an induced cycle of length more than three, strictly more than three. Okay? And, and so if we have a tree decomposition like this, that means for caudal graph we have such a tree decomposition, then we can those two problems we have seen before can be solved in poly time. How? Okay, just before, uh, just before going to it, this is an example of a caudal graph and whatever the tree decomposition we have seen in the first slide, that is a click tree decomposition where every bag is a click actually. Okay, okay now how to solve vertex cover in this setting? Because from a click, we need to pick all but one, right? That essentially reduces the number of choices for, you know, uh, yes, that will be in t square. I can leave out at most one from a back. Okay? That leads to a polynomial time algorithm for uh, vertex cover uh, in caudal graph. And similarly for feedback vertex set, this bag is a click which means that I need to pick all but at most, I mean, I can leave out two. I mean, I may leave out one or zero, but more than two I cannot leave out because there is a triangle. And that also leads to, you know, like polynomial number of states, and then that leads to a running time of poly time. Okay? You can think about dominating set. It will not work out here. Okay? It is NP complete. But for these two problems, yes. So this is an example of a structured tree decomposition, where we have a tree decomposition where every bag has some kind of a structure. Here, every bag, the graph induced on every bag is a complete graph, okay? Now, suppose I'm given a graph which is close to caudal, okay? A caudal graph plus k vertices. K is somewhat small, okay? Now, I want to solve these two problems, feedback vertex set and, you know, um, vertex cover, okay? One way to do is just compute this caudal vertex deletion set and then I get a caudal graph, there is a click tree decomposition and then there are k vertices here and using this information try to give an algorithm. And for that I need to compute a caudal vertex deletion set of size k or if I am using an approximation algorithm then alpha times k where alpha is the approximation factor, right? So computing this take time k to the order k, okay? And the best known approximation is k log k, like opt log opt, that is the best factor. In either way, if I do like, if I solve like uh, vertex cover or feedback vertex set, it takes at least this much time. So let's ask the question, can we do it better? Like, like this much running time. Yeah. Now here we can use something, what I mentioned, structured tree decomposition. The, if the graph is a caudal graph plus k vertices, there is a tree decomposition where every bag is a click plus k vertices. How to get it? You just delete k vertices, which is a caudal vertex deletion set, then there is a click tree decomposition. Add back all the vertices in CVD, which is a tree decomposition, where every bag can be partitioned into two. One is a click and k vertices, okay? If we get this structure, then we can get a faster algorithm, like, like as I mentioned, like two to the order k algorithm, okay? So even though computing, you know, caudal vertex deletion set is, uh, uh, the time for computing it is a bit worse, we can get a tree decomposition, something which is close to this. This kind of tree decomposition, I call it 1K semi-click tree decomposition. That means every bag can be partitioned into two, like one click and K vertices, okay? So instead of getting 1K semi-click tree decomposition, what we prove is we can get four 7K plus five semi-click tree decomposition, where every bag can be partitioned into, you know, four clicks and 7K plus five vertices, okay? 
And this is good enough to get those kind of running time, two to the order k for the problems I mentioned. Okay? Just quickly see it. Like any vertex cover contain at least uh, like all but one vertex, right? At least. So from the from the union of four click part, I need to pick all but four. And from the remaining, there are two, uh, two to the power this many choices. That will make two to the order k choices, and that's the algorithm. Okay? And so we, we can get this much running time using that. And for feedback vertex set also, from a click, I need to pick at least all but two. Okay? Using that and the sophisticated techniques, rather than the standard DP, we can get this much running time. Okay? So this is one way, like try to find a 3D composition where there is a structure and try to exploit to get good algorithms. Okay? Now I'll move to grid minor theorems and how, I, how we can you know, use the structured 3D composition uh, in the grid minor setting, grid minor theorem setting. So what is a grid minor theorem? For, for, for every graph, Either its tree width is large or there is a large grid as a minor. For a general graph, given a graph G and a integer W, either it has a W times W grid as a minor or its tree width is something like order W to the 9. Okay, and it was 98 and it is decreased this year to 9. Okay, and then there is a polylog W. And for, but for planar graph, there is a linear grid minor theorem, non, which means that given a planar graph and an integer w, either it has a w times w grid minor or its tree width is at most order w. Okay? And there is an algorithm, order n square time algorithm to you know, compute it also. Okay? And using this, we can solve various problems in parameterized sub-exponential time. For example, if I want to solve vertex cover or feedback vertex at any of these problems on planar graph, if the tree width is small, I can do standard you know, dynamic programming that will be sub-exponential. Okay? But if there is a you know, square, order square root k times order square root k grid as a minor, then the answer is pretty much trivial for these problems. If I have a large grid, then the vertex cover number is large. If square root k times square root k, which means I need to pick more than k vertices to cover the edges within that minor itself. Okay? And similarly, like I can get you know, more than k vertex disjoint cycles, so I need more than k vertices for. So for vertex cover and feedback vertex set, uh, the answer is, you know, yes, if there is a large grid. Uh, answer is no, sorry, answer is no when there is a large grid minor. But on the other hand, if, if I want to test whether there is a cycle of length at least k, if there is a large grid minor, I can just go like, like this, this is a cycle, right? Come back, okay? Using every vertices in the grid minor, okay? So this is the way it is used for uh, in planar graph this theorem. Okay. Now, but linear grid minor theorem is not possible for general graph because you look at the case of large click. A W sized click has tree width order W, and the grid minor you can get is square root W times square root W. Okay. So linear grid minor theorem is not possible for general graph. Okay. The Minimum unit k square, like w square there. Now, can we, ex can we use instead of like a tree width as a measure, some, some, something like a structured 3D composition and use grid minor theorem? Okay? So what we prove is for unit disk graph, I can come up with a kind of a structured grid minor theorem. Okay? Given a unit disk graph G, and an integer w, a positive integer w, either there is a w times w grid minor in it, or there is a 3D composition where every bag contain 
every bag is a union of order W clicks. Okay? It, its tree width could be, you know, large. But every bag can be partitioned into order W clicks. Okay? And this can be computed in this much time also. Okay? So this is an example where instead of normal grid minor theorem, I use some kind of a structured tree decomposition. <coughs> so now I will explain what is, I will give a proof sketch of this theorem, okay? So what is a unit disk graph? A intersection graph of unit disk in a plane. So we have a lot of unit disk and you just put a vertex at the center of this uh, unit disk and if two unit disk intersect, then there is an edge between those two points. Okay? So this is an example. Like in every center, you, you put a vertex and add an edge if those two unit disk intersect. Okay? This, is, this is a unit disk graph. Okay? It has a large click, if you notice here. Because I can you know, put a lot of unit disk at some place. Because of that, I cannot get a linear grid minor theorem also. So this is some sense uh, best I can get it, right? Because I cannot get a linear grid minor theorem. Here, a kind of linear structured grid minor theorem we get it. So now I will give a proof sketch of this one, okay? How to prove this one. Towards that, we use this theorem, which is actually a linear grid minor theorem for unit disk graph of bounded degree, bounded max degree. Unit disk graph of bounded max degree has a linear grid minor theorem. That means either I can get a W times W grid or tree width is W times, uh, w times delta cube. Assume delta is a constant. Then it is a linear grid minor theorem. Right? And this can be computed in single exponential in W time. So now, now I will, now I use this theorem to prove our structured grid minor theorem. Okay? So what we do is, first we partition the vertices in, into different cells. So I just draw a grid where these cells has diagonal length 2, or, or like this has length square root 2 and this has length square root 2, which means that any point here, they are at a distance at most 2. So any two vertices which belong to a cell is adjacent in the unit disk graph model. Clear? So I can partition it into, you know, a grid, a, 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 a grid of cells where every cell induced, the, the vertices induced on every cell is a complete graph, right? The vertices on every cell is adjacent to each other. And notice that a vertex here can be adjacent to a vertex here, but not here. Because if, it, if a vertex here and a vertex here are at a distance more than two, so if there is an edge, then the corresponding cells will be at a distance at most to both vertically and horizontally. So this will be like in the, the, the edges coming out of these vertices will be in nearby cells only. Clear? Okay. So this I call it click grid graph, like just, just our unit disk graph with this kind of a cell partition. And then what we, uh, we define something called a bo uh, backbone graph, which is like from every cell, we keep minimum number of vertices such that if in the original graph, I have an edge between two vertices in two different cell, then in the new graph also, I have uh, an edge between these vertices. Just see an example. Like I just pick a few vertices such that if there was an edge between like a vertex here and a vertex here, 
I should have a vertex between two red vertices where one is here, one is here. Clear? Okay, two adjacent vertices in the original graph implies two adjacent vertices between red vertices. Okay? So, which is actually an induced subgraph of my original graph. I just throw out some vertices from each cell. The number of vertices in each cell is a constant. Because from every cell, I can see uh, vertices in few other cells which are very close to it. And I need to keep one representative to realize yeah, an edge between two cells. Okay? This implies that, oh, it's delta of B, okay, not delta of G. Okay? Delta of this backbone graph, the max degree of this backbone graph is at most a constant. Because from each, in each cell, I have only constantly many vertices. And I can see only in nearby cells. Every vertex see vertices in nearby cells and within the cell itself. And in every cell, I have only constant number of vertices. Right? So I got a induced subgraph of my original unit disk graph, which has constant degree. Okay? Now I know that there is a theorem which says linear grid minor theorem exists for unit disk graph of constant degree. Right? I use that, so I, I get either, uh, uh, by applying this, I know that either there is a W times W grid minor in the backbone graph B, or the tree width of the backbone graph is bounded by order W. Right? So this is what we get. And the backbone graph is an induced subgraph. So any minor of a backbone graph is also minor of G. So either I get a W times W grid in G. Okay? Or the tree width of backbone graph is order W. Now what we do is replace every vertex of B in the tree decomposition with all the vertices in that particular cell. So every bag contains at most order W vertices, right? Each vertex replaced with all its, I mean, all vertices which belongs to that cell. And that is a click. And so that means the tree width no longer be bounded, but the number of clicks in a bag will be order W. Because I am replacing one vertex with the vertices uh, in uh, vertices in the cell, cell which it belongs to. And they form a click because they are in a small cell which is at a dist which is a square root 2 times square root 2 square. Everything is at a distance at most 2. Okay. And that's the proof of it. Yeah. So a structured grid minor theorem we can get it. So how to use the above theorem? Okay. One way is we have la like we have a tree decomposition where every bag contain some bounded like, few number of clicks. So if we can bound a click size, then it is good. Like for vertex cover feedback vertex, for all these problems, if there if there is a click of size more than k, then I can say yes or no. Right? In the exact k cycle problem, I want to test whether there is a cycle of length exactly k. Okay. In the k cycle, it is at least a k. Okay. Now, now suppose there is a, you know, substitute W is equal to square root k. Okay. If if there is a grid minor, then for all these problems, it is easy, either yes or no, except for exact k cycle. Because if there is a cycle in minor, then the length of that cycle may be more in the original graph. Okay? So I cannot deduce anything for exact k cycle from a grid minor. But for the rest of the problem, I can say yes or no. Is it clear?
Otherwise, we have a 3D composition where every bag is a union of square root k clicks. Okay? For these two problems, it is very easy. From each click, I need to pick, or I, I can leave out at most one, which means that the number of states will be like, you know, we will not choose atom like square root k click, square root k vertices from a bag. And each bag contains poly k vertices. So the number of choices will be number of choices of leaving out the vertices, which is poly k choose square root k, which is sub-exponential. Clear? So that's the way we can use it. Okay. But what about for k psych uh, yeah, but what about for k cycle or exact k cycle? And this trick won't work there because the other problems are very local problems in the sense I need to kill all the triangles and all the edges. Okay, so for the for k cycle and exact k cycle, we need to do a bit more work. Okay, just uh, I will show you like a brief idea of it. Suppose I have two clicks, like this is a click and this is a click, and there is a large cycle which passes like this. Okay? I can reroute this cycle through these edges. This, these two are clicks. Okay? So if I have clicks, then there will not be too many edges going across between two clicks. Like there is also a solution which uses only few edges between them. If there are two edges like this, I can just convert it like this, between two clicks, right? And so few crossing across clicks. So for, for, I have a solution where I have only few crossing between two clicks. This I can prove, like this is a lemma. And I also know that each of these click can see only constantly many other clicks because anything neighbor of a vertex here which is close to these cells at a distance at most two. Okay? This too implies that if I design a dynamic programming algorithm, from my back, the number of crossing edges will be the number of clicks in the back because constantly many between any pair of clicks and the number of click interaction in unit disk graph is constant. Like for a click, one click sees constantly many other clicks. When I am talking about clicks, these clicks are special clicks which are like within a cell. That will see only constantly many other clicks. Okay? Using these two facts, we can bound that the number of interaction there is a solution which interact with the across the back only through uh, square root k vertices. Okay, so uh, I am just giving only a vague idea here, not complete proof. And using these two lemmas also, we can design an algorithm of this much running time. Clear? Okay. Now we'll see how to use decomposition theorems. Uh, uh, along with structured tree decomposition. Okay? So what is a decomposition theorem? Let G be a graph, okay? And and W be a positive integer. Then the vertex set or edge, like equivalently edge set also, like there is a two versions, like vertex decomposition and edge decomposition. The vertex set of G can be partitioned into W plus one sets. Like a partition where I have number of parts is W plus one. Such that the graph induced on any of these W parts is bounded by f of w. And this comes from the Baker's technique or the shifting technique. And also I want a algorithm to compute it, like this partition. 
So th this is a uh, you know model of the theorem I'm talking about. Do all graph exist to this kind of decomposition theorem? No, general graph does not exist, does not have this kind of decomposition theorem. Because take a n vertex click. Can you partition n vertex? And I gave you an n vertex click, a n vertex complete graph, and an integer w. Can you get a partition where you just delete any part where then the tree width is bounded by w? No, you cannot get it. So for general graph, it is not possible to get. But it is possible to get such decomposition theorem on other graph classes. For example, planar graph, that is the Backer's technique. And this can be extended to other graph classes as well. And there is a note. Can we get similar theorem for unit disk graph? Again, no, because I can give a complete graph is a unit disk graph, that, right? Because I put unit disk at one place for n vertices, and this is a complete graph, uh, complete graph on n vertices, which is a unit disk graph. And for that, I cannot get an algo uh, a decomposition theorem like this. But can we get a decomposition theorem where instead of bounding the tree width, I say like uh, it is a semi-click tree decomposition, like where it is order w comma zero. So can we get this kind of a tree decomposition here for unit disk graph? And the answer is yes. And that's what we'll see like. So for unit disk graph, I can partition. So uh, I can partition its vertices into w plus 1 parts, such that you just delete any part. Then uh, the graph induced on the rest of the graph. Or, or like you just delete any part, then it has a semi click tree decomposition where every bag contain order w clicks clear and we can get it in polynomial time uh, the idea is very simple okay we just take our cell partition of unit disk graph okay and i label the first two uh, columns to be one and then 2, 3, like that, w plus 1. OK? And that's a partition. You just delete any of the, like, say, like uh, the part 2. You just delete the part 2. What is the width here? It is w. Right? There is actually a path decomposition for this graph. Because you take the first three, the first two here first, and then the second two, second two rows, and like that. And there is no edge from here to here, because it is unit disk graph. So I get a path decomposition here, 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 and join them. It is a path decomposition for like uh, g minus part two. Okay? And in every bag, I will have like how many clicks? Like, like probably like something like six W clicks, because I need to pick two rows at the same time. So we can get a you know uh, decomposition theorem of this nature for unit disk graph, and the normal decomposition theorem is not possible. Now let's see how to use this to solve exact k cycle in sub exponential time in unit disk graph so there is a turing polynomial kernel for exact k cycle what does that mean there is an algorithm it output poly n n is the number of vertices in the graph poly n many instances of exact k cycle in unit disk graph such that the number of vertices in each instance is poly k. Okay? 
and then in each and, and what is the property is if the original instance is a yes instance one of these sm smaller instance is a yes instance okay and vice versa so it is enough to solve the problem in in all of these small instances okay apply this decomposition theorem with w is equal to square root k okay and if there is a solution there is a solution that intersect one of the part on at most square root k vertices okay so guess that part p and q vertices that intersect this is at most square root k vertices so the number of choices is k to square root k right 2 to the square root k log k and i know that now look at the graph h minus p union q or like you just delete the part p and add back q vertices which is square root k vertices right and h minus p has a 3 decomposition of this form order square root k zero uh, semi click tree decomposition i add back square root k vertices i mean i i i add this square root k vertices in each of these bags and it's again a semi click tree decomposition where instead of square root k i will have two square root k right and here we can design a dp algorithm using the uh, the previous ideas i said like few crossings okay uh, now i conclude the talk so we have seen how to, how structured tree decomposition help in designing algorithms and how to use the structured decomposition along with the grid minor theorem decomposition theorem and there is also other, another notion of co contraction decomposition rather than you know vertex deletion or edge deletion uh, and we can get some kind of a contraction decomposition using the structured tree decomposition on unit disk graph as well that i didn't covered in this talk and uh, 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 these kind of tree decomposition exist on map graphs as well and we can get sub exponential time algorithms for various problems on map graphs and can we get this kind of 3d composition for disk graph or any other classes of graphs and at the very first we saw you know fpt algorithm for vertex cover parameterized by caudal vertex deletion set right where caudal vertex deletion set is not given and it is a tractable you know modulator there is an fpt algorithm which you know uh, uh, there is an fpt algorithm which provides that but it is a bad running time but can we have like you know uh, some modulator which is very hard to compute for example w1 w2 compute but vertex cover parameterized by that but that is not given as a you know input or like some other problem parameterized by that modulator but it is not given as the input but computing that is very hard but i just want algorithm for a different problem but the parameter is a structural parameter like this i mean are there some problems like that and that's it